Welcome to Symbirian. We develop and distribute Symbior electromagnetic signal integrity software. Uh, this is uh, the second presentation on conductor surface roughness modeling for signal integrity applications. In the first presentation, I um, discuss effective dielectric roughness approach. Um, here I will focus on roughness correction coefficients listed here. Um, uh, such a large number of different approaches exist because of direct electromagnetic analysis is simply not possible. Uh, overview of different approaches can be found in this paper. So let's get started and take a look at the modified Hammerstadt model. It's a two-parameter model. There are two parameters here. One is delta, which is uh, root mean square peak to valley distance. May, may be interpreted like this and may be, not, may be considered as a simple parameter. Uh, another parameter is the roughness factor. It defines maximal growth of losses due to metal roughness. Um, the model was suggested in the 70s by Hammerstadt and Jensen, um, uh, but the original model had limitation uh, in roughness factor was basically equal to 2, with uh, roughness factor uh, additional parameter um, uh, in, in introduced in this paper. We can uh, either um, make um, maximal growth of losses uh, lower or higher, depending on the profile of the roughness uh, um, structure. And um, the model is frequency dependent and frequency dependency comes through the conductor skin depths. Uh, another roughness correction coefficient can be constructed uh, with the Huray snowball model. Um, uh, the, uh, the model um, is described in the foundation of signal integrity, Paul's Huray uh, book, um, uh, and based on the uh, estimation of losses for conductive sphere. And the model can be rewritten uh, as uh, shown here. Uh, each term here has two parameters. One is A, one is ball diameter. And uh, by adjusting those A and D, we can uh, achieve different growths uh, of the attenuation with the frequency. So the question is, um, with the roughness correction coefficients, uh, how to apply them, how to use them? Obviously, they are constructed to um, apply them to attenuation. It's the simplest non-causal approach. It just gives you the uh, um, attenuation or insertion loss adjustment. Um, another causal approach is to apply it to the conductor, internal conductor part of the pure unit length impedance, like it is shown here. Uh, any uh, roughness correction coefficient can be used like this, but this approach doesn't account the fine structure of the current on the surface. Um, yet another approach is to apply the roughness correction coefficient directly to conductor surface impedance operator. This approach is used in Symbior software, and it is shown how it is um, done here. Um, with this approach, um, well, it's uh, uh, physical, it accounts for the current redistribution. Uh, one problem with this, we, we, don't, we cannot really uh, draw straight boundary of the um, conductor. Uh, this is, um, uh, and uh, this has effect on the bulk resistivity as well as on, on the um, capacitance of the conductor. So, uh, let's compare different um, roughness modeling in Symbior uh, electromagnetic signal integrity software. Here I have a um, 7 mil strip line defined in this um, stack up in Mectron 6 dielectric. And um, uh, in the last presentation, we constructed a model with the effective roughness dielectric for this uh, strip line, match it to measure a data and um, observe electromagnetic fields in. in um, with such approach. Uh, here I will um, I constructed two more models, one with a uh, common uh, modified Hammerstadt roughness model for all conductive surfaces of the strip line with parameters defined here. Parameters are defined by matching this model insertion loss with the effective uh, roughness dielectric. And another uh, model with the modified Hammerstadt model common for all conductive surfaces and then redefined for some surfaces uh, like for top and bottom uh, of the uh, strip line, the top uh, part has uh, smaller roughness and bottom part has uh, larger roughness, difference about two uh, in uh, expected increase of the losses uh, on different surfaces. The same for plane, top plane has smaller roughness on the bottom part and bottom plane has uh, larger roughness 
on the top part. So um, that is typical for PCB manufacturing process. So um, as I mentioned, all roughness models were adjusted to have about similar uh, attenuation uh, per, per unit lengths per, in dB per meter uh, here. And green uh, line here is um, the original not rough model. The roughness has effect on attenuation as well as on the characteristic impedance. So uh, the uh, effective roughness uh, dielectric produces larger capacitance and uh, lower impedance and um, other model roughness correction coefficient increases the inductance and uh, increases the uh, impedance a little bit. But all those can be adjusted by modifying the cross section uh, to account for additional um, capacitance that comes from roughness. Uh, the same thing can be observed in uh, term for, uh, terms of insertion loss. Here is insertion loss in 40 uh, centimeter uh, line of 15.5 inches uh, transmission line constructed of this um, um, uh, strip line. A again, this is lossless case, those are lossy cases. And if you take a look at the phase delay, the phase delays are also um, slightly different in all cases um, uh, due to uh, additional capacitance and additional inductance. Um, we can actually take a look at the unit length parameters and uh, models with um, uh, roughness correction coefficients, uh, they all increase the resistance per unit length, and that's uh, two lines here, um, two um, models with modified Hammerstadt coefficient. And mo original model and model with effective roughness dielectric does not increase the uh, resistance. Uh, if you take a look at the inductance per unit length, uh, we'll see that inductance actually in, uh, with effective roughness dielectric is smaller, with um, uh, effective um, roughness correction coefficient is a little larger. Um, in, if you take a look at the um, uh, admittance per unit length, then G real part responsible for losses is in uh, increased in with effective roughness dielectric and all other models have pretty much the same uh, uh, real part of the admittance per unit length. And capacitance, uh, well, it's, uh, in, uh, as I mentioned, increased with uh, effective roughness dielectric models. Um, to match it, in other models, we have to adjust the cross-section, draw the boundaries through the rough surface properly. And now is the fun part. Let's uh, visualize the roughness um, kind of effect on um, uh, current redistribution in um, or field uh, in the strip line. So to do this, I computed, pre-computed some data here. It takes um, literally uh, less than a minute to do uh, any of those computations. And um, uh, right here we can see I visualize only parameters that help us to understand the, the process effect of the roughness. So for instance, uh, if you take it current density on surface current density here, you can see it's 40 ampere per meter maximal value. Uh, it's, it's integral uh, of a current um, uh, through the structure uh, observed at the surface. So we can see that uh, basically echo current on top and bottom of this uh, strip and I'm, we are looking now uh, at the structure without roughness. Uh, the same current flowing on top and on the bottom. Uh, and this is a peak value. Uh, electric field. Uh, electric field on the surface. Again, this is uh, helpful to understand the roughness effect and first we have to take a look at the uh, it's 0 0.55 volt per meter. It's identical on top and bottom surface of the strip. Uh, largest on the edges um, because of the singularity at the edges. And identical on both planes. Uh, power flow. Uh, power flow here is um, uh, again on the surface. It uh, describes only the absorption uh, of, uh, of the energy by the conductor. So, and uh, it's better visible on logarithmic scale. And you can see that conductor basically absorbs uh, um, uh, energy um, from top and bottom, same level, and um, uh, the same for the planes. This is at one gigahertz. All those um, data was at one gigahertz. If you take a look at 30 gigahertz, well, pretty much the same picture. 
So uh, this is a current density, surface current density. This is uh, electric field. Basically, it describes the drop of the um, voltage and, and losses uh, associated with the conductor. And we, we can see that the value is uh, increased quite a bit um, due to skin effect here. And uh, power flow, again, uh, more power gets into the conductor in this case. In logarithmic scale, you can see it, uh, how the absorption uh, takes place. And uh, actually, power loss, you can see this uh, loss identical in the conductor in here and around the conductor on both uh, surfaces. So now uh, let's take a look at the uh, same thing only with the different roughness correction coefficients uh, defined for um, uh, planes. So top, bottom plane is more lossy, top plane less lossy, and signal uh, layer has more losses on the bottom than on the top. Uh, at 1 gigahertz, current density, basically, pretty much the same. Uh, as um, Because of the roughness doesn't have effect at this uh, frequency yet. Um, and the same kind of uh, current on top and bottom planes. We can zoom in and see that this is greenish and, and top one is also greenish one. Uh, and this is green and the scale. Um, electric field. Uh, we can see a little bit more of electric uh, field um, uh, strength at the bottom side where there is uh, more losses. More uh, losses produce more voltage drop on the bottom side, and we can a little bit more. Um, and we can see that pretty much scales the same as in case of um, without roughness. Now, power flow, same thing. So we uh, observe uh, almost uh, um, identical absorption on top and bottom plane. And now, this is the first time it is visualized in this way. Uh, at 30 gigahertz, where uh, there is substantial growth of uh, losses due to uh, roughness. And we can see that the current density, and I can animate it actually, um, there is uh, less current on top and more current on the bottom surface. Why is it so? Because of we have more um, kind of losses at the bottom and uh, the same with uh, it's actually better to use peak value uh, we can see that the current surface current is greenish on the bottom uh, where there are more losses and bluish at the top where the, we have less losses on um, this is less uh, roughness on, on top surface so now we have clearly kind of uh, redistribution of current and the same voltage drop or um, well it can be interpreted as a voltage drop right here it's a strength of electric field you can see it, uh, it increased uh, and uh, more um, uh, electric field strength at the bottom surface and then at the top surface so just to zoom in uh, and um, power flow same thing we will um, switch to logarithmic and we can see that um, uh, the bottom has um, well it's not really kind of visible here uh, the, the arrows from the top they're green so larger and arrows from the bottom they're uh, yellow uh, power loss and here we clearly see more losses in the bottom plane due to the roughness again. And uh, one of the interesting things is to take a look at the current density in the cross section. And we can see that the current density, uh, and let's just animate it. We can see that the current, dense, the current is larger at the bottom side where the, uh, there is more uh, losses associated with roughness. In the original non-rough case, uh, we can uh, switch in here and compute this uh, current density in a cross section at uh, the 30 gigahertz um, current density 
card plane <coughs> and animate it and you can see that uh, the current density is identical on top and bottom surface and 2.6 ampere per, meter, per square meter uh, hi highest current at the edges uh, and um, the planes have the same um, current at uh, top and bottom plane and it can be um, seen at, at logarithmic scale. You can see the same colors here and current changes the direction. But um, for the case of um, roughness, you can see differences in current. And you can see differences in current in top and bottom plane also. Right here it's larger current. And on the top it's smaller current. It's, um, uh, again, it may be enhanced with um, logarithmic scale here. And now we can see. Well, it's actually on logarithmic scale, it's uh, not, uh, not much more visible. But um, with zoom in, we can see it. And this is the electric field propagating in the structure. So which which model is better? Well, um, I'll answer this questions question later. Um, stay tuned. This is the end of this presentation. To learn more, visit Symbirian.com. Application notes, um, webinars, and knowledge base sections. Or download and try Symbirian now. It is available in download section. Thank you.